Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome to another episode on the Life Signatures Radio. Today is a new day, and being a new day means that uh, I have an opportunity to talk about something that is new. We've just come off of a very powerful series or where I attempted to talk about the genuine love, the challenge of genuine love. You can review the past 14 or so episodes. Okay, not 14 really, 10 episodes and see what I was up to in there. And today, again, I get an opportunity to attempt something that I am sure I don't have a lot of expertise on, but it is worth talking. Remember, I am mostly a theorist, and uh, this is where things normally begin. I have opinions here and there, and mostly we talk about purpose, productivity, and resilience. But today, I'm just about to introduce something new. It's not going to take long because I'm not gifted in this and i'm not uh, uh, practicing this (laughs) and also i don't have the experience in it but i'm gonna talk about it stay tuned Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. Well, what are we going to talk about in the next two or three episodes? We are going to talk about millionaire. That's something that I told you already that I don't have practical experience. <laughs> okay, millionaire in dollars, okay? Because uh, it's easy to get millions in Uganda shillings, a little bit easier to get millions in uh, Kenya shillings and, and all those uh, weak currencies. But I'm talking about hard currency, millionaire in hard currency. So... A couple of years back, I think immediately after COVID or maybe just before COVID, Elon Musk jumped into the charts and for the first time in history, he became the wealthiest man in the world. And I'm going to talk about his behavior and what we can be able to learn from it. I'm not going to talk about how you can become a millionaire and and stuff like that. And by the way, at some point in time, I started moving away from those titles or those books that talk about making a million, becoming a millionaire and so on. You know why? Because I felt like that's really, and I'm going ahead of myself by the way, that's really not the object or the objective or the mission or the vision that a human being can have. I think if you studied millionaires around the world, you find that making a million wasn't necessarily their main agenda, their main objective in life, going ahead of myself. It was a by the way. So what can we learn from Elon Musk becoming a millionaire, a couple of, okay, becoming the wealthiest man, not a millionaire really, becoming the wealthiest man of uh, a couple of years back. That was some, I think it was in January 2021. Social media as well as uh, mainstream media, we were awash. I mean, we woke up to the news that uh, Elon Musk, the CEO of of SpaceX and Tesla, uh, before he uh, acquired Twitter, that he had surpassed Jeff Bezos. At that point in time, Jeff Jeff Bezos was the richest man. So... um, Elon Musk had surpassed Jeff Bezos to become the wealthiest man on earth. Of course, those two had a ping pong and uh, 
Jeff Bezos went back and so on. But for decades, that position had always been oscillating between three people, maybe four. Uh, it was always Bill Gates and uh, Warren Buffett and the other guy, forgotten his name. But those two dominated, especially in the 90s and, and so on. Musk was perhaps the unlikeliest person of them all. As in, you look at Musk and the things that he was doing, he was the unlikeliest of them becoming the wealthiest person on the edge, uh, I mean, on the, on, on the earth. And reading this biography, if you read his biography, I read uh, someone wrote something small about him, I've forgotten the author, but very powerful actually. One of the, one of the things that you learn about him, one of the things that you learn about Elon Musk, is that he has guts he's he's not your average guy he's weird uh, i'm sorry no, not in a bad way but he's got guts like he has guts when he poured all the money he got from paper selling paper yeah into his next project not a single penny to buy a yacht or to fly to I don't know where and do some luxurious. All the money from PayPal poured into his next project without even knowing if that project is going to succeed or not. It's like, I don't know, it's like opening up yourself to the possibility of the money that you've earned going to the drain. Hard earned cash. He escaped bankruptcy in that project by a whisker, by mere margins, in terms of money and in terms of time. I mean, he has so much to, to write about. But then, we're talking about him becoming the wealthiest man. How? What can we learn from him becoming the wealthiest man? These days, when we teach people about vision and about goals, People would think that they are daring and really dreaming up there. You know, with those big hugs, big, hairy, audacious goals. Uh, they always have this uh, goal, financial goal, that they state like this. I am happy now that I'm a millionaire in dollars. That's a goal. That's how they state their goal. Or in 20 years' time, I will be a billionaire. It's another way to state their goals. Or I'm happy now that my net worth is dash millions. Right? I do not think at any one point in time, reading all that I've read about Elon Musk, that this was one of his goals. Never, never, never. If you interviewed him, he will tell you the same. It was never, never one of his goals. See, we are taught by, I think, uh, either Tony Robbins or Jim Rohn that success leaves clues. If you studied Elon Musk, you will know all these things I'm talking about. He never, ever wrote a goal that I'm going to be a millionaire or I'm going to be the wealthiest man or want to be the wealthiest man in this world. There is absolutely nothing wrong, by the way, let me tell you this. There is absolutely nothing wrong with having such like goals. There's nothing wrong with saying, uh, uh, in 20 years time, I want my network to be $20 million. Okay? Nothing wrong with that. There's absolutely nothing wrong with those goals. However, someone said, and this is, uh, I think it's... Uh, Victor E. Frankel. Victor E. Frankel told us something about success. He says it's not something that you pursue. This is very powerful. Let me just even get that quote for you and just read for you right now. The quote goes like this in part. I'm just going to jump into the middle of it. It's a bit longer. But he says, for success, like happiness, cannot be pursued. It must ensue. And it only does so as the unintended side effect of one's personal dedication to a cause greater than oneself 
or as the byproduct of one's surrender to a person other than oneself. Happiness must happen, and the same holds for success. You have to let it happen by not caring about it. And this is exactly what I'm going to show you, by the way, from what Elon Musk did. Just read this for you again before we can bring this to a close and we pick it up from there tomorrow. He says, this is Victor E. Frankel in his book, Man's Search for Meaning. For success, like happiness, cannot be pursued. It must ensue, and it only does so as the unintended side effect of one's personal dedication to a cause greater than oneself or as a byproduct of one's surrender to a person other than oneself. Happiness must happen, and the same holds for success. You have to let it happen by not caring about it. End quote. This is what we're going to learn from Victor E. Franco, sorry, from Elon Musk in him becoming the wealthiest man in the world in the year 2021 for the very first time. So I'm going to bring this to a close as an introduction. Tomorrow we go deeper and learn some things about that. There could be some two or three things that we're going to learn in this small short series. Stay tuned and bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Life Signatures Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, subscribe to Life Signatures Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com. Life Signatures Radio, fresh, clean, and inspiring.